Now, welcome to another lightning response video, where this time the question comes to us from Star Wars 34, who asked, Hey Thor, have you heard what Leslie Headland said about George Lucas and how no one person can do Star Wars? I'd love to hear your take. Okay, so conveniently enough, I actually had someone else send me what I'm assuming is the clip in question from Leslie Headland. And if you don't know, she is the showrunner of the upcoming Disney Plus series, The Acolyte, that will be set in the waning days of the High Republic, or about 100 years before the prequels. And there's already been a lot of, shall we say, fuss about this one because it's being billed by Headland herself as being a female-centric show and she has basically said that it's going to relate to the experiences many of us have or face today in the world, which, as I've discussed many times before, is not the reason many watch Star Wars today. They don't want to watch it to have the modern world reflected back at them, but rather to be taken to a galaxy far, far away. Anyway, I first listened to this clip as is, as it was sent to me, and out of context, and it certainly got me, shall we say, very curious. And what I'm going to do now is play it for you. It's about a minute long, and then we'll talk a lot more about it, including context afterwards. This is, like, what we understand to be Star Wars. Like, the idea that, like, that only came from George Lucas. That that, o like, that only George Lucas holds the key for what we understand to be Star Wars is just untrue. And I think the, the prequels are an ex excellent example of that. I mean, the idea that like when you're hiring a director that everyone is sitting in there waiting for George Lucas and not for the person who's going to know to hire Ralph McQuarrie, that's the problem. That's the misogyny and the, and the, and the problem with the auteur myth as it stands today because they're not thinking this is the person that will hire the right people and this is the person that will be able to create the lookbooks and direct people to get them to that place they're just thinking do you know do you have all the answers and the truth is is that nobody does and anybody that says they do is lying okay so the very first thing i did after hearing this was try to figure out where it originated from what is the context here and what else does she say or why did she say all this in the first place not to mention there's quite clearly a cut or skip in the audio clip. This is two, at least somewhat separate quotes from her, being merged into one and something's missing in between. So anyway, I did find its origin and learned it came from a 2019 podcast, the IndieWire's Filmmaker Toolkit Podcast. There's even going to be a link to the whole thing in the description below if you want to listen to it for yourself. As I always say, don't just listen to my takes, form your own opinions or your own conclusions on this stuff as well. Either way, though I admittedly didn't listen to the whole podcast, it's like 42 minutes long, the quotes in question come towards the very end of the interview, and I did try to listen to that section in its entirety. I listened to roughly the last 10 minutes or so of the interview. And how she even gets on the topic of Star Wars is by first discussing what is known as auteur theory, or to quickly put it as simply as I can, it's the idea that a film's director is essentially its author, that even if they're, say, not the screenwriter, their direction or their control of it is so influential that they deserve most, if not basically all, of the credit for the end result. And that is by no means a perfect definition, but if you want to know more or understand it better, I do suggest checking it out yourself or looking it up yourself. Anyway, she starts to talk about that and how strong this theory is in Hollywood, that what most studio execs are looking for is that one guy who will come in and handle the whole thing and then end up with most of the credit. She also talks about how she believes there are many jobs she didn't get over the years simply because they didn't believe a woman was capable of doing the job. She then starts to talk about how silly this is, how ridiculous she believes auteur theory to be, that it is a myth that no one person should get all or most credit for a film. And she brought up how she had recently purchased some Ralph McQuarrie art books and how she was surprised to see or learn how much the art of McQuarrie shaped Star Wars that many of his style choices for the first Star Wars film had an impact on the story George Lucas told or how he told it. And so in the gap between the two clips you heard, what she basically says or does is credit McQuarrie for making an indelible mark on culture for the part he played in this one film, how kind of incredible that is, but how sad it is that he really doesn't get as much credit as he deserves. That pretty much all the credit always goes to George Lucas, despite again the influence and choices he made because of the art of McQuarrie, and how important he is to the story. And that is, to the best of my ability, the full context here. And again, there will be a link to the whole podcast in the description below, and you can skip to around the 34 minute mark or so and listen to all this yourself. 
But anyway, what do I think about it? Well, I both agree and disagree with her. I mean, I myself on many occasions have talked about how important Ralph McQuarrie's art is to Star Wars or how important the score of John Williams was. That without it, I don't think anyone is talking about Star Wars anymore today. It likely would be long forgotten if it had gone with the more, shall we say, traditional sci-fi scores of the day. In other words, yeah, obviously George Lucas alone should not get all the credit for Star Wars. I believe any film is a team effort, and oftentimes, if not usually, a team can and will have a huge impact on the end result of the film for any number of reasons or in any number of ways. But the thing is, I don't know that anyone truly thinks George Lucas deserves literally all the credit. People may not point out the contributions of others all that often or as often as they maybe should when they're talking about the success of Star Wars. But no one is under the illusion that Lucas did it all, even if they don't explicitly express that when praising Star Wars and when giving him credit. That said, without George Lucas, there is no Star Wars. Without that initial idea and vision, none of it ever happens. You could take everyone who worked on Star Wars other than George Lucas, gather them all together, all that talent, and put them together and tell them to make a movie and the end result isn't Star Wars. It might still end up being a good film, who knows? But it almost certainly isn't a film that changes the world, not to the extent that Star Wars did at least. All that Star Wars became originated with George Lucas and his idea, and that is why he rightfully gets so much of the credit. He's the seed it all sprouted from. I mean, you can pour as much water on a patch of dirt you want, all the water in the world in fact, but if there's no seed, nothing ever comes from it. He is the one element that absolutely cannot be removed from the equation if you want to get the end result or anything even remotely like it. Which, as I was kind of saying before, isn't to say that if John Williams isn't hired, Star Wars turns out as good as it did. But it's not impossible to believe that someone else may have filled that role at least well enough to be passable, if not been good. And believe me, I don't want to take anything away from his contributions to Star Wars. They are immeasurable. He is the best ever, in my opinion. But those contributions on Star Wars only exist because of George Lucas in the first place. Just like her opportunity to now work on Star Wars, to have this audience, it only exists because of George Lucas. Her opportunity to now make whatever type of point she wants to make about the modern world, about misogyny most likely from all her comments, it only exists because of, ironically enough, that man and all he did. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to take to the comments below and tell me what you think of Leslie Headland's comments here. Do you agree, disagree, or what? Or you can always ask a question for a future lightning response video. Just start your comment off with Hey Thor and ask away. Whatever you choose to do, leave those comments below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.